the glory, great things he has done. Who loved me in the world, but he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and the bond for sin. And opened the light gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth be. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and gave him the glory, great things he has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, where every Who truly believe that moment from Jesus and pardon receive? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Who come to the Father through Jesus the Son? Great things he has got, but great things he has done, and great or rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but power and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the Lord. Welcome, friends, and good morning. I'm really excited for today's message. How about we pray before we get fully underway here this morning? Would you lift your voices with me in prayer? Holy Father, we come before Thee not by our merit, but by the merit of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, earned and purchased through the finished work of the cross. We praise Thee, O Lord, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that You abide with us, that you touch us, that you move in us, O oh God, we pray in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Happy Thanksgiving, friends, and welcome to our service on building a personal relationship with God. It's going to be a wonderful and an exciting Sunday, but I'd like to ask my wife, we're giving the Dern clan a bit of a break, putting the Mershon clan to work. I'd like to ask my wife, so please give us the first reading of scripture and the announcements before we continue with our musical worship to Almighty God. Jess, would you take it away? Good morning, friends. We hope you're doing well and you get a chance to catch our two online programs, Songs and Stories of Shiloh on Wednesdays and on Thursdays, our new mini-series on Salvation. It was so wonderful to see Chris and Diana and to hear the beautiful teaching from the Gospel of Matthew this past week. We have two announcements for you today. Number one, look forward to our planned Remembrance Day service on November 11th at the Tiverton Cenotaph at 10.45 a.m., provided that everything goes well in the planning stage. We have already done some consulting with the Greg Bruce Health Unit and with a few other churches in our area, so do look forward to that. We would also like to announce Pastor John Luke's vacation, which will cover the first Sunday of November, that is, until the 7th. We hope to have an in-person service still, um, a guest speaker, but if not, no matter what, we will have a wonderful online service still. 
so you can look forward to that. Our first reading of scripture comes from the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. In this passage, the Bible teaches us that God not only hears our prayers, but answers our prayers. While it can be hard to believe that we receive whatever we ask for, we need to begin by understanding that we serve the Almighty God. He is more than able to supply any need and any request. But we must ask for things in purity of heart. If we ask from a clean heart, we can be certain that as children, our Heavenly Father hears us. Our reading is as follows. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. And this is His commandment, that we believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as He has commanded us. May we never fail to come before God in confidence and with a clean heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word.
Our second reading of scripture comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It centers around this important lesson of prayer as taught to us by the Master himself, Jesus Christ. Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, curses a fig tree, then the tree withers. From this occasion, Jesus teaches us a powerful lesson about faith and prayer and the necessity to come to God without doubting. The parallel passage is found in Mark 11, 20 to 26, but our reading today comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 to 22. It reads, In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, May no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive, if you have faith. May we, with unwavering trust, come to our Lord with the innocent eyes of faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his word. My Savior, His hand holds the earth. Jesus, our Creator, praise Him for His worth. Yes, O oh come and let us worship. Oh, come and let us sing Glory, glory to the Father Glory, glory to the Son Come, oh, come and let us praise Him With all our heart in Thee He is worthy, love and holy Because He cares Your name is power, breath, and living water. I sing to the King, you are, I always sing. Yes, so come and let us burn. Oh, come and let us sing Glory, glory to the Father Glory, glory to the Son Come, come and let us praise Him Is all our heart in Him he, he is worthy, love and holy Because He cares
Friends, I hope you enjoyed our wonderful little time of, of worship there. And now if you have your Bible, I'd like to do a third reading of Scripture and then the message. It's going to be in the Gospel of John. You can go there if you desire. The Gospel of John, the 14th chapter in the 12th to 14th verse. Of course, it'll be on the screen as per usual, which I'm sure is nice to have. So I'm just going to... Try and set this down without making too much noise here. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. It's the Thanksgiving season. It's the Thanksgiving Sunday. And we just want to talk about the subject of prayer. The subject of prayer. The book of Proverbs says, A fulfilled desire is a tree of life. It's a very wonderful thing when our desires are fulfilled. When something good happens when we get something that we want and it doesn't always have to be a bad thing you know it's it's a very good thing it's a tree of life and when we're thankful for something it's because we've received something that fulfills our desires so thanks be to god i hope that this thanksgiving season and in this covid time you can find at least one thing to be supremely thankful for we can always be thankful for the cross we can always be thankful for what God did. We can always be thankful for Jesus. But in our personal life, it's important to look for fulfilled desires. Things that have worked out. Things that are joyful. They are a tree of life. As the Bible says, they give us great, great encouragement and help us to go on day to day. So I do want to say that because we're going to talk today about prayer. We're on the subject of building a personal relationship with God and prayer is the most, if you will, essential aspect from a personal perspective, from like a human-to-human -human perspective, prayer is the most essential aspect of building a relationship with God. When we become a Christian, we often hear these testimonies. When we remember the moment we became a Christian, very often it's through prayer. It's through prayer. And should it not be a particular moment of prayer, it is through a lifetime of prayer that our faith grows, is sustained, and flourishes and prospers as we walk with God. Prayer is irreplaceable. It is essential. And we have just heard this morning two superlative statements on prayer. Whatever you ask, I will do it. It's not a one-off teaching. It's a consistent Bible teaching as we're going to see, but what does it mean precisely for us this morning? This all-important subject of prayer. So would you read with me? We're going to see Jesus say much the same thing we've heard, just showing the consistent Bible picture. John 14, verses 12 to 14, English Standard Version. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God for his most holy word. How about we pray this morning, my friends. Almighty God, we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would send thy Spirit, Father, to hover over me we ask lord jesus that you would abide with me that you'd annoy me you'd be with my heart my mind give me the words and the wisdom to speak them well that you would bless us this morning bless our ears our eyes and our hearts in jesus name in jesus name amen prayer is one of my favorite topics to talk about it is a simple topic it is also complex <laughs> at the same time and, and in different ways because prayer has to do with our experience of life and life can be complicated and we often pray through complicated times 
in life. And so prayer shares in that complication. I remember before when I was pastoring in Toronto, my sister-in-law, she taught at a school and they had a chapel. It was a Christian school. And I was invited a number of times to speak at the chapel. And every time I came to speak at the chapel, she can testify, I spoke on one topic and one topic only. Prayer. Prayer. I think if you can teach children to pray, it's the most important life skill. The most life-changing thing you can have. Because before we get into the details, before we get into the limited nature of prayer, because there's a limit, Jesus puts on it, we need to first remember that it is unlimited. Unlimited. Whatever you ask. The number one thing that I want you to take is God wants you to pray in faith and in confidence. And the prayer of faith, the prayer of confidence in God, not your personal confidence, but confidence in your Almighty God, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Your confidence in God, the prayer that is done in that way, that will change the world. It will change your life. It will bring about amazing blessing. And I don't exaggerate. I don't exaggerate. Actually, my wife, she shared this in in the chat. My dad actually shared it with us originally. It's this Korean church, and they're doing this this song, Every Praise. Every praise. I'm familiar with the original version by Hezekiah Walker. But this Korean church, they're doing this song. The Korean church was planted through amazing prayer. The efforts of many missionaries. But Jonathan Goforth is one Canadian missionary who prayed, who was sent by prayer, who wrote a gospel track, not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit. Oh God. You see, prayer changed the face of the world. It brought people to Christ. It planted the church. It not only does that, it supplies miracles, blessings, kindness from God. Prayer makes known to us the love of the Heavenly Father. That's why Jesus teaches us to pray, Our Father. Prayer is something we do in our relationship with God, as children of God, as disciples, as followers, as learners of Jesus Christ. It's essential, it's important, and it's limitless in its scope. We can always pray. And we simply don't realize we have the Almighty God at our disposal and He wants to help us. And when we really realize those thoughts, when we really take that into our mind, it's going to change our life. If we really knew and considered what was available to us in prayer, we'd pray more than we do. Nobody can say they pray Enough. We think we're secure in our identity identity as God's children and that things are planned by God, all of which are true. But the Almighty Son of God, who according to the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, He, Jesus Christ, made time to pray. Prayer is so important. Prayer is life-changing. And when we don't make time to pray, we fail to take advantage of the manifold grace of God in our life. That's the fundamental teaching of this passage. Contrarily, it goes, if you don't ask, you don't receive. And as James says in the book of James of the Bible, you do not have because you do not ask. The asking, the praying, the whatever brings real change in our lives. And when we pray, I want to get this down straight. John says, If you ask me anything in my name, we pray in the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus is made available to us not by invocation, not by just saying Jesus. That's an important part, but that's not the only thing. The name of Jesus is made available to us by the supreme act of the cross. You can pray. Because Jesus purchased your life on Calvary from sin, death, and the devil. You can pray because of the nails, because of the thorns, because Christ gave his life on the cross for you. That's why 
we can pray. It says in the book of Proverbs that the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to God. Because as it says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. The wicked, the ungodly, those who mock, those who scoff, those who want nothing to do with God. But what separates a sinner from a saint is not the sin, it's the cross. It's the cross. We're all wicked. All our prayers don't count until the cross comes into your life and changes you. It's not by our sinlessness. It's not by our merit that God hears us. It's because of the sinlessness of Christ. It's because the devil has no claim on Jesus. It's because of the blood. It's because of the Lamb that we can pray. And I want you to see this in John's Gospel here. We read this morning from John 14. Jesus is talking with his disciples the deep mysteries of the faith before he goes to the cross. And in this time period, he has prayer on his mind. Before he goes to Calvary, we know he falls on his face and he prays, Lord, he prays, prayer. Prayer is on the mind of Jesus. When the apostles are sent out from Jerusalem into the world, Jesus tells them to wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And we find them gathering, praying, prayer, how life changing, how important but only done in the light of the cross and by the blood of Jesus. Do not think that it is by my goodness. Do not think that it is by my greatness or by my merit because of how good a person I am that God, that Jesus is going to answer your prayers. And you cannot limit his answers. You don't know how he's going to help you. I remember at this Thanksgiving season, there was a time when I wasn't living very Christian, and I was I was going off to Bible college, so it was quite a contradiction <laughs> to be training to be a minister and not to be living a very exemplary life. We'll put it like that. And so I came home one Thanksgiving. This would be my first Thanksgiving away from school. I came home, and my dad he was he he sensed uh, my my my. There's tension. There was tension in the air, and at one point it, it boiled over. My dad got upset. He said. I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask the Lord to tell me how I should deal with you. Because he was upset with me and it was understandable. He was correct. He was right. So he went upstairs. But at that moment, I don't know what took me. I went downstairs to pray. A counter prayer, <laughs> counter prayer almost, right? And I got on my knees to God. And I said, Jesus, I know I've made mistakes. And I know I don't deserve it. And I can, I can assure you, friends, I didn't pray that I was going to change my ways. I didn't do that. I simply prayed and I said, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've made mistakes. But I just want to have a peaceful Thanksgiving with my family. That's what I prayed. That's it. And I went upstairs. And my dad went downstairs and met me on the main floor. And he said to me, Me. The Lord told me to have a peaceful Thanksgiving with you. The Lord took my words, gave them to my dad, and gave them right back to me. What a proof for myself and for my life. And it's defined how I understand prayer. It's defined how I understand my ministry. That God answers prayer. We get hung up on the feeling of our sinfulness and not the feeling of the cross. You know, it's funny, I didn't know it in the moment, but I know it later. Jesus tells an example of the prayer that is heard. Of the prayer that is heard. And it's the tax collector, it's the sinner. It's the one who maybe is considered wicked. He comes, and he beats his chest, and he says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Just like what I prayed. Have mercy on me, God. Have mercy on me, God. And the Lord hears the prayer. But the one who feels himself justified. The one who is legalistic in the sense that he, he thinks he's assured to God, the Pharisee. He doesn't hear from God. He doesn't hear from God and he doesn't receive mercy. We so often pray, don't pray, sorry, because we don't believe we deserve mercy. 
But that's exactly what defines mercy. It's something you don't deserve. So then when we do not pray, it is actually because of pride. Because we think we don't need it. Because we think we can go on our own. Because we think that without prayer, we can somehow make it. But I want to tell you right now, prayer is limitless. When prayed through the power of the cross in the name of Jesus. That's the first rule I want to lay down, whatever you ask. Now there is a limitation Jesus puts on. It's limitless, but there's a limitation. And it'll make sense as we go through. The limitation is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, there are two things. The will, the purposes, the plans of God. Because Jesus is God. And also Jesus is man. Prayer is against the fundamental human nature. God, he doesn't answer those either. Jesus, within himself, he always lived according to the purposes and the plans of God. He always did what was pleasing in the Father's sight. And because he did so, because the thoughts and the intents of his heart were always pure, God-honoring, God honored his Son and answered the prayers of Jesus Christ, the Almighty Son of God, who is God fully himself. And so we ourselves, when we pray, We need to ask if we are praying according to the will, the purposes, and the plans of God. Number one. So prayer is limitless, okay? But it's limited in that the Lord grants prayers that are pleasing to Him. But as we spent a lot of time going through, one of the prayers He loves to grant that is pleasing to Him are prayers of mercy. Prayers of kindness and compassion God loves to help sinners. He loves to do it. He loves when the sinner prays and asks for mercy and for help. So let's get this clear. When we say limited, I mean we need to define it. Because prayer is an insider act, not an outsider act. People want to test God. People pray because they want God to demonstrate himself because they don't believe in him and they don't want to believe in him. But prayer is an insider act. If the secrets of prayer are given to those in the upper room, the disciples of Jesus before the cross. That's the scene here of Jesus' teaching. So prayer is something that is given to the followers, to those who love Jesus, who are trying to live according to the purposes and plans of God. But so often as believers, when we think of the purposes and the plans of God for prayer, okay, we think abstractly. We think abstractly. We we we. We, we think that God will grant things if it is in His will, abstractly. We don't know the will. We don't know what He has. We don't know, we don't know, but we just we throw it out there. We throw it out there. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I would like to advertise to us another dimension of that. A- another way to think about it, to add on top of that understanding. Because I don't think that's, that's wrong. We often pray, we cast our bread upon the waters. That's how the Bible puts it. Hoping that God hears us, hoping that God does something. But Jesus here, when he says we pray in his name, he's talking about a certainty that we know we are going to receive what we ask for. Do you know something about that? That certainty that if I ask it in the name of Jesus, that means that we have an awareness of the will of God in our life. And that awareness of the will of God in your life comes from a clean heart, a knowledge of God, of who He is, His holiness, His power, and His might, and a continual meditation of the Word of God while being covered by the blood of the cross. Do you see what I'm saying? Jesus, He always did what was pleasing to God. He always had the law in His mind, and He had the cross. And so we, in the name of Jesus, we're praying in the name of Jesus, it's got to be homogenous. It's got to be the same. It's got to be one look. We've got to look like the Master. We've got to be living according to His will, having Scripture on our mind, on our heart, and having the cross overshadowing our life. And when we pray from under that blood of the cross, you're going to have knowledge and confidence that when you pray, Jesus hears you and will do what you ask. You know you are living according to His will. 
All right, we're talking about an active knowledge, not a passive knowledge, a knowledge that you know that what I pray for is according to his will and he will grant it. That's how you know when to persist in prayer versus when to desist in prayer. That's how you know that your whatever is a whatever that's going to be granted and not a whatever that is something that should not be asked for. Because we're not to test God. And Jesus here is teaching us that when we pray in his name, we're praying according to the purposes, the plans, the desires. We're praying to please God, and we're asking for things that we know He's going to give us. I just outlined that beautiful Bible passage about the tax collector and the Pharisee who prays, the tax collector who prays for mercy and is heard. When we pray for mercy, God hears us. That's a Bible truth. So then you can always know that whenever you pray for God's mercy in your life, He's going to hear you. He's going to hear you. So we need to be aware of the purposes and the plans of God as they relate. To prayer. That's very, very important. The second limit that is placed on prayer through the name of Jesus is the human limit, the human nature. God took on human flesh. God's will for his people is not to abolish our, our humanity or to make us not look like, you know, other people, not to be recognizable to other people. Maybe that doesn't make too much sense. We don't know this issue, but, but I think we do. You know, sometimes as believers, we want to demonstrate miraculously the realness and the faith of God. But God does not answer prayers to please egos. God does not answer prayers for us. Neither does he answer prayers that go against the things he has set in place. And one of the things he has set in place is our human nature. Jesus is an excellent example. The mortality, the nature of death. Jesus died when they pierced him. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus was human. And that cup's not going to be taken from him because he's a man moving according to the purposes and plans of God. Do you see that? A prayer against human nature in that regard is not going to be answered by God. Jesus, when he was fasting, he was hungry. The Son of God hungered. He didn't pray. He didn't ask God to remove that facet of his human nature. In this life, we face sufferings. We face testings. We face trials. Some, indeed, the Lord delivers us by his great mercy. But some are by their nature because we're human beings on this earth. They, they cannot be avoided. There are things that we go through because of our fundamental humanity. Our sufferings is sort of pain. The Lord, he does not remove it from us that we may pray. He won't, because they're part of life. Those are just a couple examples. I mean, you can go out in the winter without a jacket. You can pray. You can ask God to make you warm, but he's not going to make you warm. He's not going to make you warm. That's a testing of God. That's going against the things he's put in place. All right. Now, of course, as always, we can cast ourselves on his mercy. But the soul knows the difference between a testing and a mercy. You know when you're asking God for help versus when you're not. The soul knows it has knowledge. It has awareness of its relationship with God. And to say all these things, so we have these two limitations. I just want to summarize them. Our prayers are limited by whether they're according to the nature, the plan, and the purposes of God. Our prayers are also limited by, by our human nature. The Lord is not going to undo our humanity. We all will face death. Even those who were raised from the dead in Jesus' ministry, eventually they face death. For it is appointed each man, says the word of God, one time to live and die and then face judgment. And also to hunger. Also to hunger. As the Son of God himself hungered, we feel pain in our hungering because of our humanity. And we will feel that pain unless we eat. The Lord does not grant certain prayers that are against his will, against his plans, against his purposes, and against our fundamental humanity. But nevertheless, we can freely say whatever we ask. Because when we're abiding under the blood of the Lamb and walking in the Word, 
we have a knowledge of what we can pray for. And our soul, our heart, wouldn't dare pray for anything else. And when it does, we know. We know we are praying not as we ought to. And so we turn and we change and we return to that wonderful and original way to pray. I hope, friends, that this all made sense to you this morning on this beautiful topic of prayer. I wanted to start us there with the limitless nature of prayer because of what Jesus has done for you. Because of what Jesus has done for you, we feel we're sinful. And so God won't hear us. I tell you, it is the sinner asking for mercy whom God loves to hear. And then those who walk close to God. I think of my dad actually a lot in this situation. I knew that if my dad went up to pray in that story I told, God would answer him. The Lord would tell him exactly what to do. He would tell him if if I did something wrong. I know that my, my dad walks with the Lord like that. I have that knowledge. So we we have that closeness with God. But then also, there's the sinner who can plead and ask for help. And God hears. It's amazing the mercy and the grace of God to his friends, those who walk near to him, and those who are not near but who are asking for help. It's the beautiful identity of God. I think we can summarize it like this. When you pray, all right, think of the limitless nature. I gave those two limitations, the the will and purposes and plans of God and our human nature. But those are, those are kind of abstract. All right. I want to put it to you like this instead. Put it to you directly. I hope this summarizes it very cleanly. The Lord wants us to pray according to all the promises in the word of God. All right. That's his will. You can know them. You can hold them. You can pray them. You can feel them. They're not dead or abstract. They're living. As Jesus says in John 6, the words I speak to you are spirit in our life. There's a livingness to praying. So pray according to the word of God. This is the counsel of God. This is the plans of God. Pray according to what's in the Bible. But if you won't pray according to what's in the Bible, or if you don't dedicate yourself to knowing what's in it, we we maybe don't love the word of God as we should, then pray according to the cross. Pray for mercy. Pray for the blood. Pray for Jesus to help you. And he's going to change your life. I promise you. I promise you it will change your life. It changed mine. It changed the lives of everybody who's a believer. The power of the cross and of the Lamb of God. Would you receive a benediction this morning as we pray? First I'm going to pray and then we're going to give the benediction. Oh Lord, we just come before thee asking for thy help and thy grace. That you would hear us when we pray. We glorify you, God, and we worship you, God. We praise you, God, and we adore you, God. We thank you, God. We just ask for your help to pray that we may see the answers, have our faith strengthened, and know that you are a merciful, kind, and loving Father. We thank thee for thy Son, Jesus Christ, the ultimate price. Oh, to know the heights and the depths of the love and the mercy of God. Forgive us. For our sins we pray, and Holy Spirit, make your home with us. O three in one God, we ask and we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And amen. 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 It was good to see you guys this morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, my friends. I hope you take care. You have a fantastic week. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. It's the most wonderful thing you can experience in this life. It's the power of prayer. Take care, friends, and God bless. 